Hello everyone, welcome to Java for Testers tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about data types in Java. Now understanding data types in Java is really important because we'll be using um, data types in almost every test case that you are going to create using Selenium WebDriver with Java. And this is very basic concept and you need to have a good understanding of what all data types are available and where to use which ones accordingly. So in Java, you can categorize data types into two categories, as you can see on my screen. The first one is uh, primitive data types and non-primitive data type. When we say primitive data type, it is basically the data type that is defined by the programming language. So Java library or Java API itself provides these data types. So for example, byte, short, int, uh, long, float, double, boolean, and char. These are, these are eight primitive data types that are provided by Java programming language. When we say non-primitive data type, so they are also known as reference type. We'll look into details or um, more you know, details into non-primitive data types. So they are uh, basically strings and arrays. So a string uh, in Java is very widely used uh, with, uh, you know, in similar lines as primitive data type, like in TGR, you define string as well. But in Java, string and arrays are the classes. So we'll look what exactly non-primitive data type or the reference um, type is. So uh, let's go ahead and see the primitive data type first. So if I go ahead and uh, see the details of the data type. So data type, uh, which, which are the primitive data type, as you can see on the screen, there are eight main uh, data types. So the only difference uh, within these data type is basically the first four byte, short, int, and long, they store the whole numbers, okay? So if you have to store uh, a whole number, you, you need to use either byte, short, int, and long. And the only difference between these four is basically the size of the number that is stored in these data types. So if you have to store very smaller number, you know that the number cannot exceed, say for example, 127, you use byte and um, it will save you a lot of memory uh, for that particular uh, variable that you are defining or the data type. Then um, short is again, you know, there is a range of numbers that it will accept. So it cannot accept the number that is more than 32767 and minimum number is negative 32768 that it will accept. Similarly, integer is 32 bit, so size is 32 bit and accordingly it stores the number uh, from negative range 2 to the power 31 to 2 to the power 31 in the positive side. Similarly, long is a 64 bit, is, is of 64 bit size. Now the next two float and double store fractions. So if you are storing fractions, then you use float or double. And depending on the size that you are looking for, you can specify whether you want to use float or double. And you have to use, uh, so we'll, we'll look into how you can define these and use these in Eclipse in a moment. And then you have Boolean, which is basically, you know, one bit of size and stores either true or false. That's the only thing that you can specify in Boolean data type. Uh, then you have char, which is basically, you know, 16 bit and store a single character. So it, it, it will store a single character. Along with these, there is very, very, very widely used, you know, a string. So a string um, should not be misunderstood as a primitive data type. It's uh, basically a, a non-primitive data type because string is a class in Java for which you can create an object and use the string uh, methods that are available in that particular class. So let me um, open Eclipse and let me go ahead and uh, create a class to explain you all these data types. So I'll say uh, DT demo. I'll just give that name. And I'll include the main method. Let me finish it. All right. Now to define the data types. So for example, you want to uh, define the int. You simply use the keyword int, right? And you define the variable. So you can say uh, my int. Okay. Now this my int variable can hold the integer value. So if you go to the slide again. Uh, this variable can hold up to 32 bit or the number which is up to 2 to the power 31 in the positive and negative number which is 2 to the power 31. So that range that can be stored in this particular variable. Now uh, the other ones, 
say for example um, if we want to look into the other data types which are uh, the uh, primitive data type so for example short okay uh, then boolean uh, long right and float similarly uh, double and char okay so seven and there is one more so byte right so if we store it in sequence a so byte is the smallest one then comes the short then integer and then long these four are the ones which will store the whole numbers and then float and double will store your fractions and boolean will store either true or false okay and then char will store a single character so byte i'll say uh, just bt i'll uh, provide the variable name here similarly for the short sht and long g all right so these are the variables that I'm defining and if we uh, talk about you know storing the values now or assigning the values so byte I can not store more than 127 so I can the max value that I can store there is 127 if I change it to 128 you will see that particular you know error that type mismatch it cannot store the byte cannot store the value more than 127 okay similarly if we talk about the negative value it cannot store the value that is less than 128 so if we change it to 129 you can see that the error has been displayed right uh, similarly for the short there is a range uh, that you need to specify so i can store you know any value there so you can see that there is a type mismatch so um, as I, as soon as i change it let me change it to yeah so short the range is basically uh, 32767 so it should accept um, 32767 yeah and that should be uh, fine for short similarly for the integer uh, there is a range I can specify any value there just to show you for long you have to specify the value and then you have to use L in front of the value to differentiate that this is the long value and not an integer if you don't use that it will be considered as an integer uh, then for the float you can specify the decimal value so i can say one point something and you just append with the f there and i'll say um, my float there and define a variable uh, my double all right and for double as well you can simply store the decimal value and just append d in front of the decimal value for the boolean uh, i'll simply say bool and i can store true or i can store false in this particular data type for char i can store a single character okay so i can say uh, in single quotes you can specify the character that you want to store in the char so these are some of the these are eight primitive data types that are available in java okay and uh, the next thing is non-primitive data type so what exactly is a non-primitive data type when we say uh, so non-primitive data type or reference data type is basically defined by the person or the programmer who is using that particular class so if you see the class name is dt demo right when i create an object of this class okay when i create an object so for example new to create an object i simply have to use the keyword new and use the name of the class so this is the uh, the object that has been created right and then i can use the data type which is same as the class name right so this is the data type dt demo and then associate or define a variable that holds this particular object right so this object is being uh, associator or is, is being uh, held with with this particular variable dtd 
and what is the data type here so the class name dt demo is the data type or non primitive data type now why this is non primitive because this is defined by me i can specify any name to this particular class here and then the name of this data type changes accordingly so um, that is why it is called as non primitive data type when we say string so a string is also uh, available in uh, the, in the java library as a class right so it's it it comes from the library but because it is it is a class we can create an object of the string so i can simply say new string if i say like that it creates an object right and a string is the data type okay that i can uh, create in this case okay because this is the object and this is the variable str and this object is held into the str variable which is of data type string here dtd is the variable which is of data type dtd demo right which stores this particular object of this dtd dt demo class all right so um, that's the basic you know difference between the primitive and non primitive data type so primitive data type comes built in or define in the programming language and you can't you know if you have to define an integer you have to use int always okay you can't change it but in non primitive uh, data type you can specify whatever name you are looking for to your class and that class name will be your data type but primitive whatever keywords have been defined for example byte short int long float double etc they remain as is if you want to define primitive data type now if you go to the java docs right i'll uh, quickly walk you through so this is the java doc of version uh, 14 a java api specification jdk and this is very important you know document if you want to really um, you know master your programming skills and learn a lot uh, in a lot better approach or better way to you know understand how things are structured so if you see this particular you know documentation so you have this uh, java platform se and apis define the core java platform for general purpose com computing right so anything starting with java is for general purpose computing and should be good enough for you for to you know start with the uh, reading the documentation so if you go to java.base right this is the module which has the foundational apis so here we'll say we'll see the class that string class that i have been discussing and java.lang is the package which provides classes that are fundamental to design of the java programming language this is the fundamental you know uh, module java.base which has this package so if you go to java.lang you will see you know uh, different classes there okay so these are all the classes so if you scroll down you will see string is one of the class if you click on string it it will show you the details of the string it's a class and when we say string str and you assign any variable or any any string to it it's basically internally it create creates an object the same way that we have done in this statement so i can simply also say uh, string uh, str1 and i can simply specify the string in double quote so this is first string okay i can specify that as well uh, or i can do this way so i'll explain you what is the difference when you you know specify string like this or you create an object like this and then you know uh, assign a string to this particular variable so i'll explain you that uh, all that difference in the next tutorial but uh, going through you know this uh, java doc is really you know important and it will help you a lot in understanding the key concepts and the classes that are defined and the methods that are available in that particular class so if you scroll down you will see the method summary that is available in this string class and along with the description what exactly this method does okay so that you can read from here to get the details or in-depth knowledge of the classes and the methods that are available in this particular you know class so that's all for this particular you know tutorial um, in the next tutorial we'll look into more detail about the string class 
and uh, how you can use the string class and what is the difference when we you know create an object of the string class and uh, or we directly assign this you know value or the string value to the string variable so that's all for this tutorial hope you like it thank you very much for watching